Our question this week is one that I get several times a year, mostly in spring and fall. Why did all my new plants die in the fabulous new raised bed I just built? It always turns out that not only have the people with this issue built a brand new raised bed, they've also brought in all new soil to fill that bed. And since everyone wants to make sure that this new raised bed, with all the care they've given to make sure it's the perfect height, the perfect width, and the perfect length, they fill the bed with the best soil they can find. Well, even the best soil will have issues when it first joins your garden. Usually people purchase a mixture of soil and compost, a great idea. But since that soil and that compost, whether pre-mixed on site at the soil yard or mixed to order according to your instructions, has been sitting in piles waiting for you to purchase it, which is completely normal, now you get that dry stuff to your garden, fill your raised bed with it, and proceed to plant your precious new vegetable and herb seedlings. You faithfully water each plant, or maybe even the entire bed. But after just a short time, you notice the seedlings are struggling and they all die pretty quickly. Everyone's thoughts immediately jump to the conclusion that it must be some sort of disease, extremely unlikely, or the possibility of herbicide damage, more likely than disease, but still not the most common problem. No, the issue is lack of water. But wait, you say, I just told you that I faithfully water my plants. And I say, I know that, but you're not watering your soil. And new soil, having been completely and utterly dried out when you purchased it, has no ability to get wet until you thoroughly mix it with water. The best way to do that is to wet it and turn it and wet it and turn it until it's uniformly moist, before you fill your raised bed with it. But if you didn't do that, no worries, simply wet it and turn it and wet it and turn it in the bed, then replant. The soil can now hold water and your new seedlings will have a much better chance of survival. I've never had anyone call me back and tell me that this technique didn't work. The exception to that would be the possibility that the organic matter in your mix of new soil was contaminated with an herbicide that didn't break down during the composting process. If that's the case, your new seedlings will have distinct symptoms, usually leaf curl and yellowing, prior to dying completely. We've had this issue in our demonstration garden, and we watched to see how long it took the soil to remediate without replacing it. It only took one season and the plants were growing normally again. Our plant this week is Swiss chard, perfect for winter gardens and very easy to grow from seeds or transplants this fall. It comes in many different beautiful colors, all of which add striking interest to your garden, while many other plants are dormant and leafless. This beautiful edible plant is one you'll want to include if you're growing winter vegetables, but you should also consider it even if you're not. It looks great in the landscape right along with your other ornamental plants, even among your wildflowers, which are planted at the same time. Swiss chard does best in full sun with a moderate amount of water. You can plant it alone as a single plant, but it also looks great in group plantings of three to five. Mix in some of the bright red cultivars in one spot and use some of the yellow and red in another. Getting much taller than they do wide, plant Swiss chard only about six inches apart. There are many great cultivars for Central Texas, including the heirloom Ford Hook Giant. Our viewer pick this week is from Melinda McGowan. For beautiful bluebonnets next spring, be sure to plant this fall. Melinda sent in this wonderful picture of her dog Leo in his bluebonnet selfie. We absolutely love getting photos from our fabulous viewers, and as you might imagine, I love especially those with dogs. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org/ctg to send us your questions and pictures from your garden.